I think it would be no understatement to say that without this coming week, an annual observance, the church would not exist. It was a roller coaster week with all its twists and turns from Palm Sunday to Easter. It transformed the disciples, those first ones, and informed the core message that they would share with the world. I'm Dave. Good morning, and welcome to worship at the start of Holy Week 2022. We know something about roller coasters, to be certain. We are a people dizzied by the ride we've been on the last few years. But we're not at the mercy of circumstance. The message of Holy Week, at the least, is that even when things seem at their worst, God is not thwarted. God's still at work. God is the God of the new thing. And God will bring new life and resurrection, transforming our world. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, by your Spirit, illumine these words of Scripture, that we might hear what you would have us to hear, and become who you would have us to be. For the sake of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. First Scripture today is Psalm 118, selected verses, and we are experiencing that Scripture through a hymn. From the Psalter, it's... Um, a familiar tune again. Week by week, as I share the scriptures with you, I am doing so by means of my own paraphrases so that we may comply with copyright law. This first lesson from Isaiah 50. As the Lord is my witness, it is the Lord who's equipped me to teach, to give comfort and encouragement to the weary. Day after day, I receive the Lord's instruction. The Lord makes sure that I'm paying attention. I'm not like a mule who cannot be governed but I have taken beatings. There are those who pull on my beard and insult me and spit at me. And through all of it, God has sustained me. My honor is not defaced. So call me old stone face. With God near me, no one can shame me. Do you want to try? 
Come at me, bro. Give it a go. Do you want to oppose me? Then stand up and face me. If your verdict is guilty, know a higher court has vacated it and dismissed your judgment. Do your worst. You will exhaust yourself trying. Here is my testimony. Psalm 31 is another of our scriptures today. Again, from the Psalter, this time number 80, and perhaps a less familiar tune, but I think it is quite singable. I hope you sing along. Our lesson from the New Testament letters is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2. He writes, I solemnly urge you, have the same demeanor as did Christ Jesus. One in essence with the Father, he did not cling to his privileges, but made himself of no account. He came not to be served, but to serve. And being fully human, Jesus accepted all kinds of humiliation, even a shameful execution. Crucifixion is totally humiliating. Consequently, the Lord has given great dignity and honor and has granted a title greater than any other, so that none deserve to stand in his presence. In heaven above, so on earth below, even in the realm of the dead, all will glorify God the Father by the declaration Jesus Christ is Lord. The Gospel Lesson for Palm Sunday from Luke 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus had gone through the town of Jericho. It was there that he met Zacchaeus and also healed the blind man. The blind man then followed Jesus on the way, according to the Gospels. While he was there in Jericho, he told them a parable the point of which it was, at least in part, the fullness of the kingdom of God would not be coming in the manner that the people were expecting. After telling this parable, he continued on his way to Jerusalem. Approaching Bethany and the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples on ahead to borrow someone's colt, a young donkey, never ridden and he gave some very specific instructions on where to find it and what to say. It seems like maybe the owners might have been prepared, arrangements already made, and they were just waiting for the words, the Lord needs it. The disciples followed the directions and returned with the colt, and using their cloaks to make a kind of saddle blanket, they helped Jesus to take a seat on the colt. And from there all the way into Jerusalem, It was a parade. Palm branches and cloaks on the road, people singing praises to God. If you'd seen what they had seen, you probably would have been singing too. The song being sung quoted one of our psalms from today. In the name of the Lord, blessed is the coming king. Now all this was too much for some of the Pharisees who were with him. They wanted him to silence the crowd. Jesus said, Today is the day all nature should sing. If the people do not, then the rocks will take up the chorus. A song, Lead Me, Lord.
Today I'm adding additional verses from Luke 19, and I'm supplementing it with information from John chapter 2. Descending the Mount of Olives Jesus was approaching Jerusalem, and he wept over the city because they had no understanding of peace. God was offering them another way, but Jesus could see that the day would come, and needlessly when the city would be under siege from Rome, and Rome would totally destroy the city. When he entered the temple complex, Jesus saw that there was all this business being conducted there, and he considered carefully what he should do. So, taking his time, very deliberately, he made a whip, and then came back, driving out every sort of merchant in the place. He quoted from Scripture as he did so, remembering Isaiah calling the temple a house of prayer for all people, and remembering Jeremiah's words about the hideouts of robbers. Jesus came back to the temple every day that week, and was publicly teaching there, and was unhindered, even though some of the temple officials were ready to pass the death sentence for what he had done. In response to the readings from God's Word today, Lord, speak to me that I may speak. I invite you into a time of prayer. Triumphant God, we echo the shouts of Hosanna as we relive the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem and all that awaits in the week to come. Like that first parade so long ago, we might have different ideas of what kind of Messiah we long to welcome. Many of us seek one who thinks the way we think, one who will wield power to meet our longings. As we give our gifts to you this day, may we be of the heart and mind of submission. You know better than we do the kind of Messiah that is needed for your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. We lay our jackets across the dirty lane and you cross before us. We lift our voices to scream unashamed and fill your ears with our support of you. We do it with a child's trust that change and goodness can come. Goodness will come through you forever and ever. But as your waving hand shrinks in the distance, as your donkey flanks fade from view, we wonder, is this display with our cloaks just the dead chivalry of a broken bygone age? Are the silly shrieks of passing enthusiasm also soon to fade from view? Perhaps. But there's a deeper chivalry, a more faithful passion within you. A chivalry that lays its life down into dust, 
for friend and foe alike. A heart that walks hand in hand with God through the valley of the shadow. Even as we celebrate, upon such things we meditate. Amen. And prayer, the prayer is from Alive Now, comes to us via the um, United Methodist Church Discipleship Ministries website, and it was uh, offered with permission for use in worship. Postlude, precious name. The next video will be Prayers and Praise.